Hi there everyone. Having looked through a lot of the YouTube offerings and new videos being put out up there, I thought it may be a precautionary to put a little thing in about uh, neon lamps. Particularly neon lamps that were made without any internal resistors. I remember many years ago, I was in my teens at the time, so it was a while back, of getting one of these bulbs. I don't know where it came from. It had a valve base to it. It was a beehive near what we're looking uh, what we're looking at now. And it had a valve base on it. Now I thought, oh it lit up in the the, uh, the radio which it was in, and I thought, oh I'll plug that into the mains and see if it works and of course unbeknown to me I just plugged it into the mains when I turned it on there was one almighty bang and a valuable lamp even, even in those days they were quite valuable um, disintegrated I don't know whether it actually broke the outside glass but it certainly the inside glass was just smashed and that was due to the fact that there was no limiting resistor in series with the bulb and as it ionized with the mains voltage there was no way to limit the actual current and it just went up and up and up till it finally blew so I'm going to put a little device in which is a very handy device it's often used for uh, if you have a very old radio and you want to slowly bring it up and you haven't got a variac. There's the circuit, it's a very basic circuit. Poor man's variac is what it's called, it's a, it is a recognised term. Uh, mind you, you're better to, if you can get a variac, and even then there's precautions, so I will show you later. Now there's the plug socket. We use a low wattage bulb. I've put 15 watts. You know, that is only going to allow a small amount of current to pass. If you were to put a 100 watt bulb in, in there or something larger then obviously the current would be more and you may have chance of overrunning the bulb in there under test. So I would certainly limit it to 15 watts um, 110 or 230 depending on where you are now it definitely would limit the uh, the current flow there's the holder for the the neon on test and it's just a simple series circuit okay now also looking at this beehive which is quite an old one as you can see it's a pick top which means evacuation was done through the top rather than the evacuation tube which you would have normally have seen in that center stem all you see in there is the two feed wires and those feed wires simply go <coughs> to the two contacts on the base <coughs> i know <coughs> excuse me i know the base cap looks as though it might have a resistor in it. The reason these caps were larger than the standard was to incorporate a wire wound resistor. Now considering these lamps run about 4 watts the resistor would have to be at least a 4 watt resistor. So it's no good putting in a little carbon resistor half a watt or something like that it will just not do and it will not work it's got to carry the current flicker candles do you can get away with using uh, one of these sort of half watt resistors but this is quite a hefty bulb <coughs> four watts for a neon is quite high now a lot of it you can tell by the weight if it's got a resistor it does tend to be slightly heavier but always look, if you ever get one of these bulbs, always assume it has not got a resistor in it. Sometimes 
Sorry about that. Uh, there's some at the door. Where was I? I know where I was. It was getting back to these bulbs that have resistances. Always assume there's no resistor in it. I'm trying to focus so I can you can see what it says on here because I just just noticed this now. I don't think you'll be able to read it, but I, I'll read it to you. On there it says no resistor fitted, but what it does say is the actual value of resistance. I think you can just see it there. Two two seven oh, I think that is. I'm going to look at it without going through the lens. It's so important this is. Um, I want to get some daylight. Yeah, I want, I want a bit of daylight. Let's have a look. Hold on, excuse the mess in the other kitchen. I want to get a bit of daylight to see, see what it says. Um, yeah, sorry to be long-winded, but it's done on purpose. I don't want you to blow these up because they're that valuable. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm going to look at it and I'll tell you what it says. It's 2270 ohms. That's 2270 ohms. Now that would be, I imagine, for working on 240 volts. So you've got an idea there. That would have to be a 4 watt resistor wired either in the base which you can't the base which you can't do because it's all sealed but wired in series with one of the feeds now what I'm going to do is just set up the, uh, the variac and show you this lighting on a variac and how dodgy that can be you've got to be very very careful okay let's plug it in right now we've set it up with my small variac There's the neon, we're plugged in, ready to go. Now, I don't advise really using these because you can easily go over the mark. I'm going to slowly wind it up and while I wind it up we'll look at the bulb. We're now pushing 50 volts through. There, we've just struck, we're just striking on the centre electrode. Now the voltage on there, according to the Variac, is just over 100 volts. Now please, please, just because it says 100 volts, don't go and plug this in to 110 source. You've still got current behind there. Now by just moving the Variac a slight distance to about I would say probably 110 volts now you are on what I would say would be the correct operating voltage for that lamp now as I'm controlling the voltage the current is looking after itself and that bulb can stay alight like that for many many hours days weeks you're okay but it is not advisable so please you know be very careful if I tell you these lamps can fetch well I've seen the normal one the normal beehive type on eBay I, w I wouldn't pay the price I'll tell you that now but these the normal ones can fetch 70 pounds I don't know what that is in any other currencies but 70 pounds in my books a lot of money how much one of these would cost being an antique and a pip top which we're talking years and years and years ago quite a bit more so if you do don't blow them up they're worth having because they're an investment perhaps not as the same investment as gold which is going up by the minute but certainly an investment and one you want to keep so if this is being used over here, wire a resistor in circuit with it. I would also, if you do that, put it 
put the resistor on and also wire it through this circuit so you've got belt and braces. If the resistor's dodgy, it will show up without you blowing the lamp. That's about all I'm going to say at this point. Be very careful. These lamps are very, va very valuable. I would say probably 9 out of 10 of the lamps that turn up would have resistors in them that are either on 110 or 240 volts. But don't always think they will have them inside because they haven't. Also refers to the small neons. There's a little Siemens neon I've seen in the past. It's a, as far as I know, I've seen them years ago. Small bayonet cap made by Siemens, the, uh, the German firm, which was the, the, um, the makers of Osram. And these definitely didn't have resistances in them. So, you know, whatever neon you get, do check. Don't blow them up. Anyhow, that's all I'm going to say on this point. So, thanks for watching. Any questions, please ask. I'll try and get back to you. If you ever see these lamps on eBay at a silly price, grab them. The problem is you won't. Um, the American versions, you can often get one that uses argon gas and that glows with a blue. In England, I don't think they ever use the, uh, the blue one. Belgium, I believe they did, but certainly not in England. Anyhow, I'm going to shut up now as I've been gabbling away for too long. It's that Blarney stone I kissed many years ago. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Thank you again. Thank you. Please subscribe. Please comment. Please ask questions. Thank you again.